Yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited that, um, that this game went the way it did. I'm glad that we were able to play a lot of players. I'm really proud of our team and the maturity that we had handling the Christmas break and handling this game. I thought we, we executed about as well today as we have executed all year offensively. Obviously, when you pick up a stat sheet and you see 30 assists, you know something's going right. Um, so just I, I thought our team was focused, really proud of um, how, they, how they played. About 5.15, um, talked to Jordan Horston, and she was just not feeling well at all. Uh, it's not COVID-related, uh, but she just, she just was not feeling well. So um, she was unable to go. She was actually at shoot-around today, um, not feeling great, but it just got a little worse. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to rest her and get her back in, in a day or two. Coach, you're two for two now in uh, Chris, uh, games right after the Christmas break. So it, it – With, Without practicing? Yes. Um, Am I on to something? I think you're on to something. And th some of the players that were just in here said they, they got on the uh, court themselves in, in, the, in the break. Does that show when they come back to practice a player who, who did manage to find a basketball on a basketball court in that break? For sure. And, you know, when we came out um, – we came out and, and opened up the court a little early, and I think we had, I think we had nine player, um, nine, seven or nine players out shooting, um, and they shot it really well in that shoot in that shoot around on their own. So I could tell right then they'd been in the gym. If you have a team like this, it's going to get in the gym. They're going to find a way to get in the gym, and they're going to take this very seriously when they get back. Um, I think, and, and as long as the calendar falls where you have the time to do it. Um, it worked. It worked for us last year. It worked for us this year. Last year we stumbled upon it. I wasn't excited about it. This year I was excited about it to, to try it again. And uh, what it did, it, it allowed us to play a game instead of having that first practice that I don't feel like you get a whole lot out of. You're just running up and down just to be running up and down. So um, I, I think this was the last two years, this was much better for our team. When Abby Cornelius, she's a Knoxville, Knoxville native, she was asked earlier about, you know, playing here, and she got really emotional, you know, talking about watching Pat Summit growing up, and, you know, her family still bleeds orange. But, um, you know, what if you feel like that says about the overall, you know, impact of the girls in this community growing up watching Pat Summit? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I mentioned to our team in the uh, pregame locker room chat is, you know, this this team, a lot of these players are from the area, and they grew up loving this program. And, you know, um, a lot of them grew up dreaming about wearing the orange and white uniform. So, you know, for, for a team like that to have the opportunity to come and play here on this court in a place that you loved so much growing up and it meant so much to you, I think it's really special. I, I understand why people get emotional. And, you know, that's one thing that I, we try to express to our players. You know, not all of our players are from this area, but they understand. They understand the tradition and what it means. And um, I, think, I think that's important. I think it's important for, for our players to know how they feel when they take the court. And um, it's, uh, it just reminds you how impactful this program has been. Coach, with this being your last game before SEC play starts, how proud are you are are you of what your team has done during non-conference, and how have you seen them grow through non-conference? Well, I think we've gotten better. I think our team has. Um, I think we're playing with uh, a little bit, even on the court, a little bit better chemistry. We have great team chemistry. They love each other. You probably tell they were gushing about each other in the in the presser here, but. Um, the, the on-court chemistry is, is, has gotten even better. And I think just going through the non-conference and having some battles and, and really being tested and then also enjoying, you know, everyone's double-doubles and almost double-doubles. And, you know, I think they've just enjoyed this time together. And um, I think you, you just see it on the court now. Um, there are so many ways we need to get better. I mean, so many. And um, I'll, I'll pick it apart uh, later on. But I, I'm proud of them and the growth that they've had, the resiliency that they've had, and, and the toughness that they've shown. For a Maria. You had uh, a lot of good minutes for freshmen, and, and 12 of those 30 assists belonged to your freshmen. 
how do you feel like they progress even over the last couple of games in running the offense and you know kind of seeing the seeing the court yeah i think um I think the non-conference, the, it, it's really the, the last two games they've gotten a lot of minutes, but it's, it's everything. It's sometimes not getting minutes in a game. It's sometimes getting a couple of minutes and being productive. It's, it's the whole entirety that has allowed them to grow. And, you know, you, you don't just get to step out on the court. And, um, you know, I think they've learned how valuable experience is. Um, our, our veterans have that. And... Um, you know, the other thing is they have shown how hard they are willing to work and how great team of teammates they are. You know, I, in, in today's, today's society, it's really easy for freshmen to get a little quick uh, and a little, little bitter when their minutes aren't what they want them to be. Our freshmen, all four of them, have been amazing. They have been true teammates. They are, um, they are team first kids. They are working hard. They, they understand what goes into it, um, and they're a big reason that our culture is so strong right now. Digging a little deeper into that, Caroline Striplin had a career-high 12 points and also nine rebounds on top of that. What was so successful for her in this game? Well, we kept pounding it inside. I think first we look inside, and, and we should. That's what we're going to do anyway. When you have the advantage, we're really going to do it. But Caroline works really hard. She's open all the time because she works really hard. Um, and she, uh, I've said this before, she's one of our best um, post-ups. She does a great job posting up. And um, we were able to throw her the ball, and she's able to finish. She's, she's one of those just keeps coming back at you, back at you, back at you. And, um, you know, I think she's just, she's just going to get better and better, you know, a, as a player here at Tennessee. She's just going to keep, keep working, keep um, – you know, what she's going to add now is just game experience. You know, she's just putting that out right in her belt and how she can be successful against a lot of different players. Maria, Cora, and then Jean. Coach, one, one way to see that a team is elevated is how do they play when they're up 20, up 30, up 40. They never let up. I, is that some of their personality, or are they also taking on your personality? Because you were like that as a player. And then a quick follow-up question – Samantha Williams, had, where, did see her on <laughs> the bench. That, yeah. I know, so I just have to check on her yeah. too. Uh, well, Sam first. Uh, she was not feeling well, um, and so just in extreme caution, stayed away. So that's that's what's going on with her. Um, we're we're gonna hopefully get her back as well. So we just being really careful there. Um, and then, you know, I think it is. I, I think it's hard sometimes when when you're up 20, not to start looking around, to start losing your focus. I think it's human nature. But um, we have so many players that just stay focused in those moments. Um, I'm really proud of them for that and very, very mature. They, you know, they're not, they're having a good time, but they're not goofing off. You know, they're, they're over there just really enjoying playing basketball, which that makes me so happy. You should love to play, and that's what they're doing. They're loving to play, but every single time down the court, they're trying to do everything right. And um, I told them, um, you know, in this game, I said, you guys push, I'll slam the brakes on. And it was just a really good balance. Um, you know, I'm so proud of that. I really am, because that's not, that's not always easy to do. You said after Stanford that, you know, when the, with Alexis Dye in particular, you felt like, Settling for jump shots too often, not getting to the rim. Tonight, that was not an issue. You know, I think she only took four or five jump shots arrest. She was immediately looking to drive. How happy are you with her adjustment offensively? And was that something you guys really worked on? Yeah, we talked about it um, as, a, as a team. We, we kind of broke down where everybody needs to go. And we talked about, um, like we call her Snoop. Uh, we talked about Snoop needing to get to the basket more because she had that ability. And uh, I think she's looking – she's very aggressive. She's a very aggressive player, so she can get that jump shot off about any time she wants. We want her to look for that layup more or the drive. And she was able to do it. And I tell you, she had a really good one there in the second half where she started to drive, found a kick. And I think we hit a three – I think Tess hit a three on, on that kick. Uh, and I thought that was a really good play by her. And it was being aggressive, trying to get to the basket. So, you know, I think um, we were also able to get post touches that got us to the basket as well, which I think is really good. 
Kelly, both you and Katie, in a sense, have taken completely different rosters into tonight's game than what you would have expected back in October, November. I think she's missing five players, she's missing three. In terms of games like this, how important is it to, to have kind of had time to get some of those younger players involved? Because the way that, you know, the, I guess America and the country is going right now, you don't know exactly who you're going to have available game in and game out. Yeah, you're, you're right. You, you never know. At this point, you, you never know at what point you're going to lose a player. And you don't get to pick and choose who that is. And so that's where you hope that you've got some depth. Um, you, you hope that you've got, um, you, you know, players ready to step up and make plays. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not fun when you don't have your whole, uh, whole roster. It's, I like it when I've got everybody available. That's much more fun to coach. But I, I tell you, I was really proud of our team um, when they stepped out on the court. I was a little concerned that, that maybe without Jordan tonight that they would be a, a – you know, she gives you a lot of confidence. So I was, I was worried about that ever so slightly. They didn't blink. They just went out and did what they needed to do. And that, I think that was really good for us as well because um, they, they have really taken on this attitude of, you know what, whatever happens, happens, and we're going to handle it. And I love that. Maria and Laura. Just jumping ahead to Thursday and then Sunday, do the newcomers have any idea what grind they're about to start with SEC play? You know, we have tried um, to talk to our, our team about the SEC schedule and the rigors of the SEC. And I just told them I think the SEC is better. I think the top's better. I think the bottom is better. Uh, and, I, and I told them it doesn't matter who you play. If you relax for one minute, then you're losing. Is you're not going to win the game. And so we talked about that and told them they should be prepared. At this point, our non-conference schedule should have prepared them for what they're about to see, but you can't take a night off. Don't know why I would worry about that. I don't think our team has taken a night off yet. I'm proud of that. Um, it's hard to be consistent every single night, but I think, we've, I think we have done that. And, um, and, and I think for our, our veterans have, have tried to encourage – our, our freshmen and our rookies who, who don't un understand it um, because they just haven't experienced it. I think they're, um, I think they're, as, they're as prepared as they can be going into this play. And we, we've tried to explain it to them and help them along the way. Laura. Brooklyn Miles has, you know, kind of slowly, you know, increased her offensive production, hit two threes tonight. I believe she hit two last game maybe. But, you know, how important is that for you heading into SEC play to have her be someone who does stretch the court for you guys? I think, I think Brooklyn played really well today. She's, she's clocked for three turnovers. I think uh, two of them were kind of un unfortunate um, errors. She, she had one true turnover, but um, I, I thought she played well. And the fact that she's knocking down shots is going to be critical for our team. Um, you know, she is going to stretch the defense now, and she's got enough quickness to get around you. She has a really good understanding of the game. Uh, I'm sitting on the bench, and I, I was trying to get her to do something. She was, I got, she knew before I told her what, whatever it was. And I came to the bench, and I said, man, she has savvy. I mean, she gets it. She understands it. And, and right now, she's playing with great confidence. And um, I lo love the way she is, um, love the way she is coming in. And I love her pace. And um, just everything about her game right now has been positive. Coach, a little less serious, but uh, were you aware that you snapped the double-double streak, the, the program record 11 straight, and uh, were you thinking about that at all during the game? Well, um, Snoop talked me into letting her try, uh, so she got to play an extra minute or two. Um, Caroline, I know, was the one that was closest to, uh, to the double-double. You know, um, it, it's fun, and I love the fact that they pull for each other. And um, it's, it's, it's really neat. But, you know, Tamari Key plays 16 minutes. I think if I'd have played her a few more minutes, she'd have gotten there. It's not worth it at this point. It's, it's, it's more important that Emily Saunders gets a few more minutes. Um, so they, they enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun to talk about. And our, our players have, have really enjoyed that as well. But, um, but we, got, we, we got a whole, whole sheet full of stats that we can, we can be proud of. Thank you guys for coming. We'll see you Thursday.